This game I do have, Detroit Lions, Minnesota Vikings, Matt against the world game here. Um, I'm on the Lions. I know everybody in the world is on the Vikings this week. Um, This is all of the reasons that we avoid the Lions doesn't really come into play this week. It is, yeah, it's late in the season, but it's not golf going outdoors. Not only is it going into cold weather, not only is it not not golf going into cold weather, it's not golf going into the outdoors even. Golf is going to a dome. This is a team that when offense, when the offense has every one of their weapons, I, I mean, I'm being dead serious when I say like they are a top three most dangerous offense in the entire NFL and they're going into this completely healthy. I'm sure you guys have seen the trend. I don't know if you picked up on the offense better or what, but like Jamison Williams is getting all the snaps now. So he's like an actual true wide receiver two now for this squad, which is something that they were kind of counting on on him earlier in the season, but whatever, better late than never, I suppose. And the other deal about golf, right? I mean, we haven't really had a ton of these like golf bonehead turnover games. We've had two, but we hadn't had, you know, two out of 14, you know, it ain't that bad. Two out of 14 for golf really ain't that bad. And I get it. The Vikings live and die by the blitz. If you look with all the weapons that, that the lions have, I like to believe in my heart of hearts. They're going to know they're coming hot and heavy. They're going to have the plays called. They're going to know how to get the ball out quick. I just think from top to bottom, this Lions team is 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 built to to handle what the Vikings are going to bring on the defensive side of the ball. I played it at three. Um, I know everybody else likes the Vikings this week. Yeah, but I don't like the Vikings at three. I bet it at three and a half, which I think is there's a big – I know in the grand scheme of things here, Matt, we're probably like you know splitting hairs. But betting the Vikings at three basically – in a lot of in most cases requires them to now win the game for you to cash the bet. So that to me, I'm only interested in Vikings at three and a half. And honestly, I was with you at the start of the week. And then I heard a lot of matchup situations here with him playing Flores with golf playing Flores. That caused me a lot of concern. Um, the pressure that golf's going to have to face the zone coverage that Flores likes to play behind it has been an issue for golf in the past. I won't go into any more detail because Eli and Mo are going into great detail on why they're betting the Vikings. So if you want that side, I would suggest go listen to that on our podcast feed or on our YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, Matt. I, I did a 180 on this one because I was with you early in the week and I heard enough to make me get scared off of it uh, by, by later in the week. Yeah, I mean, look, Nick Mullins to me isn't anything I'm afraid of either uh, when it comes down to it. So, I, again, I, guess I, I know I'm on an island with this one. Adam, uh, where do you land? It's a pass for me. So, there you go. I'll, I'll, I'll be between you guys. If I were to play, I probably would be on Detroit. But I think there's enough question for me as to Detroit's ability to cover the Vikings if Justin Jefferson looks anything like Justin Jefferson again that I don't want to be involved with this Detroit defense it look Denver made them look better than they really are it's not a good defense it's not going to be a good defense if you made me take Denver's offense or Minnesota's offense with Justin Jefferson I'm probably going to take Minnesota's offense so I see the reasons for people to be on the Vikings but the one thing that I think we have to be really clear about here is that with the Lions, it's even less about golf. It's about the offensive line. It's about Frank Ragnow being in there. It's about them being healthy among that offensive front. And when they are, they're outstanding offensively. It's just a matter of being able to protect Jared Goff. And so when we start to talk about the blitzing of Brian Flores, I think what we really have to talk about is, is this Detroit offensive line going to be able to hold up under the pressure? I think they will which would put me on to leaning Detroit. But for me, this one had too much question to it, and I passed. See, the uh, yeah, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, the other thing that I'd like to to bring up in this one, why I'm kind of like not all that worried about it is, man, I think Gibbs brings such an incredible dynamic to this offense and, and, and a way to deal with all of the pressure all the time. Like, I think you can line up Gibbs – while Montgomery is out there, right? And then now you are coming with, okay, what's Gibbs going to do? Are they going to hand it to him? Are they going to throw it to him? Like, does he kind of block and then leak out? Like, I think there's I think there's a lot of things that Gibbs brings to the table. I, I think he has a massive game in, in this one, actually. I would, 
you know, if, if I was putting together like some sort of same game parlay, Adam, you were talking about earlier in the podcast about how, you know, sometimes you just play the extreme, right? You play like almost the 120th percentile and like, I think you could put Gibbs in for like whatever, 120 from like all purpose yards or whatever, you know, 120 plus scrimmage yards and things, stuff like that. Because I think that that is a formula in which you could look that he really, really, really has a good game. You, you look, like I said, with golf, you kind of know what you get, but the guy's been pretty damn good this year, right? I mean, like I'm not a golf guy, but the dude's been pretty damn good. He's had one real stinker and that's about it all, all year. And so I'm, um, I'm okay with with kind of backing him here in, in this situation. I do believe that the offense is going to be ready for what they come with. And and look, Mullins is just he's just what he is, right? I mean, he just, he is what he is. They're going to move the ball. Everyone moves the ball. Oh, the, oh Mullins is going to turn it over. He he's erratic. Yeah. He's going to turn it yeah. over. Yeah, he's he is what he is, right? Like he's just they're putting him in there. Like he's not. You know what all of this stuff does, and this is getting off on a tangent, and, but we'll get back on top. All this really does is prove Kirk Cousins was a G. Like, this this offense looks like ass without him yeah. out there. And, like, and like Kirk, it just shows you, like, Kirk Cousins was the most underappreciated quarter, especially now that we see how many bad quarterbacks there are in the NFL. Good God, Kirk Cousins got disrespected. Adam, I'm making myself the Kirk Cousins got disrespected president, and you can be vice president. <laughs> Uh, okay, do we get like a 30% Kohl's discount with that? Yes, you get, <laughs> yes, whatever, and all, any of the other commercials that he's like, that he's been on and, and all things like that. Like I said, I, I know I'm against everybody on this one. It's just all the concerns that I used to have for golf don't really translate in this game to me. It's not in the cold. It's not outdoors. It's full health on the offensive side of the ball. Like, I don't know. There, there's something tells me that we're, we're digging too much into like golf priors in this one where I don't know if it, it's kind of like apples to apples.